Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions. We're glad that you've joined us again this morning. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12. There's a great verse here I want to have a look at this morning. And uh, about a week ago, I'll be honest with you, about a week ago we had our ensemble practice on a Monday night. And I was asked to do the devotion, but I had forgotten all about it. We were uh, just putting together our first practice back after this hiatus. And uh, Donna has organized these practices, and she just mentioned to me in passing, would you do a devotion that night? And I said, sure, but I didn't write it down. I didn't put it on my calendar. And we got there, and it just kind of rang in my mind, you know, I think I'm supposed to do the devotion. I said to Donna, I said, well, who's got devotion tonight? She says, you do. And so I said, okay. Well, I, this verse jumped into my mind, and so I just talked for a couple minutes on 1 Samuel chapter 12 before we prayed and opened up our practice that night. But I, it just been sticking in my heart, and I just wanted to expand on it a little bit more, and I thought I'd make a devotion for you out of it this morning. So if you found your place, look at 1 Samuel chapter 12, and look at verse 24. The Bible says, Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things He hath done for you. Let's pray together. Our Father, Lord, we thank You for this time in Your Word, and we pray, Lord, that You'd help us with it, strengthen us with it. And for the next just few moments, we pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would uh, get a hold of it, use Your Word to teach us and to strengthen us. So, Father, fill me. Well, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I like some of the, the words that I can just draw out of this verse just for a moment by way of introduction. The first word is only. We are only to fear the Lord. I, I'm not to fear, the Bible says we're not to fear man or what he can do to us. They can only kill the body, but we rather should fear God who can kill the body and soul in hell. We're only to fear the Lord. We sing that old hymn, only trust him. And I put the emphasis on the word only when I think of that song, only trust Him. So we're only to fear the Lord. And the Bible says this next phrase, serve Him in truth. And we're going to come back to that in a moment. That's going to be our, our theme this morning. But only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth. Look at the next phrase, with all your heart. Anything worth doing for the Lord is worth doing full out. Doing with all of our heart. And I think you would agree that anything in this life you've had the most success with is that thing you have given yourself the most to. If you're going to have a successful marriage, you must give yourself fully to the marriage. If you are going to have a successful job, you must give yourself fully to your job between 9 and 5 or whatever your work hours might be. You must do your very best to be pleasing unto your boss. Well, the Bible says we are to uh, only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart. When we are serving God and fearing God, which should be all the time, we must give it all that we have. And then we see a, a, the last phrase, which is similar to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, For consider how great things He hath done for you. In other words, in light of all of what God has done for you, let's, let's serve Him with all our heart and serve Him in truth. The Bible says in Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, or in light of all the great things God has done for you, uh, to present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, wholly acceptable, uh, which is your reasonable service. And so we, we consider uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24, in the light of Romans 12, 1. They seem to dovetail nicely together. But I want to draw your attention back to that one phrase, only fear the Lord, look at this now, and serve Him in truth. I want to give you an implication and I want to give you an application. First of all, the implication is this, to serve Him in truth, and the command is given that we fear the Lord and serve Him in truth, implies that you might be serving God a different way. You might be serving God not in truth. Well, then we need to understand what does it mean to serve Him in truth. To serve Him in truth, the phrase in truth has really two definitions. One, and, and, and both of them apply here. The first one means without hypocrisy. To serve Him without hypocrisy hypocrisy. In other words, when we are serving God, we're not, we're not there to impress man. We're there to serve God. And so we, our inside and our outer actions must match. We are serving Him with all our heart, and therefore our effort 
echoes what is going on in the inside. It, it's got to be in truth or without hypocrisy. There are so many that are just trying to serve man. I, I, saw, I saw recently just a little movie trailer. I was looking at a, a Christian preaching sermon on YouTube, and uh, the pastor was about to preach, and a little ad came up, and it was from a, a movie company called Pure Flix, and they make Christian movies, I guess. I don't know a lot about them. And they just showed a little a trailer about this movie, and my wife and I sometimes want to watch some Christian program, and, and so I watched a little bit about it, and it was about a girl, a young lady who took a liking to a young man, and so she decided when she found out he was a Christian that she was going to play the part of Christian. She came alongside him and worked along him in his charity work and, and tried to show everybody that she was a Christian uh, just so she could catch this man, but her heart was not there at all. She was serving in hypocrisy. She was not serving in truth. And unfortunately, so many of us serve because we're afraid of what man might think of us, when truly we ought to be serving in truth, worrying only about what God thinks about us. The second part of that definition, so we serve Him in truth or without hypocrisy, but we look at it in light of John chapter 17. Jesus was praying about His disciples, and He said this, Sanctify them with thy truth, Thy word is truth. So when we serve God in truth, we are serving Him in light of the Word of God. In other words, we must line up with the Word of God. We just can't go off and say, well, I'm going to serve God today. What can I do? Let me just make something up that is totally, completely unbiblical and wrong and say, well, yes, but I'm serving God. Well, that's, that's not what the Bible means by serving Him in truth. As a matter of fact, wars have been started in the name of religion because people thought they were serving Him in truth when in fact they were going contrary to the Word of God. So to serve Him in truth means without hypocrisy, we must line up the inside and the outside. Our actions must echo uh, what is going on in our hearts, but also we serve Him in truth by lining up with God's Word. That's what it means to serve Him in truth, or the phrase in truth. Well, let me give you four things quickly from the Bible that we are to do in truth. Things we are to do without hypocrisy and things we are to do uh, in, light, in, in lining up with God's Word. So first of all, 1 Samuel 12, 24, serve Him in truth. What are we doing to serve God that lines up one with His Word? And when I say lines up with His Word, I would say through the local church. We understand that the local church is Christ's plan for this age. We are living in the age of grace or the age of the church. And so we worship Him and we serve Him through the local church. That's not to say it's wrong to serve Him in other ways. We, I, I often try to say this to people when they say, well, what do you think, Pastor, should I help somebody in this way? I say this, my answer is, it's never wrong to be kind. And so I know that when you're outside the local church and you, Lord, lay something upon your heart, we ought to do that. And so we serve Him in truth. It lines up with God's Word. What I am saying is that we are not to make up some ministry that doesn't line up with God's Word, that doesn't fulfill the mandates of reaching the lost, that doesn't fulfill the mandates of showing Christ's love, it doesn't fulfill the mandates of, of showing a positive image of the Lord Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. It gives a good testimony, in other words. And so we must be very careful that we serve Him in truth. Psalm 145 and verse 18 says this about in truth. It says we are to call upon Him in truth. Now it's specifically talking about prayer in that passage. When we come to the Lord in prayer, we are to call upon Him in truth. Now this is much easier to do in your prayer closet than it is to do publicly. I've heard people pray publicly, and I'm sure I have prayed publicly, when my heart is not right with God. When I am standing before a congregation or I'm sitting in the congregation and called upon to pray and my mind is elsewhere and I'm not focusing on the things I ought to focus on and I get up and I say how great God is and I worship Him in my prayer and yet I know that I wasn't worshiping, worshiping Him in my pew. It's so much easier to do it in your prayer closet because in your prayer closet we strip away all that other stuff and we get just down to the brass tacks and we just pray to Him and call upon Him in truth. I would say that when the Bible says call upon Him in truth, we can also compare that to Romans 10 where it says, whosoever 
calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You understand that in order to be saved, you must call upon Jesus, but it must be in truth. It cannot be in hypocrisy. We must make sure that we are obeying God's word when we come to Him for salvation, that we understand that we were sinners, that, that we're worthy of death, and Christ took that penalty upon Himself when He died on the cross. And the shedding of His blood was for the remission of our sins or the putting away of our sins, and He cleansed us and made us right. But if we don't understand good Bible doctrine, we have not called upon Him in truth. And so remove all hypocrisy from your life. So we serve Him in truth, and we call upon Him in truth. But John 4, 24, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. This really is an important one for the Bible believer. I expect that most people that are listening to this devotion today are are children of God. They're likely folks from Bethel Baptist Church that have long time ago trusted Jesus as their Savior. And, and we've been using these devotions to try to encourage and strengthen people during the, the quarantine time. And we've continued on even past that for, for now. And, and, uh, and so I understand that you're likely already saved, but this point really should get to our hearts where we worship Him in spirit and in truth. There's a lot of times where we get into church and we smile, we sing the hymns, and we, we worship God, and we let everybody know around us that we are singing out, and we are smiling, and we are happy to be in church when we've just had a knockdown, drag out, and fight with our wife and kids in the car, where we've just not spent much time with the Lord that morning, where we have not prayed before we've come into the service and asked God to work in our hearts and touch our hearts so we might have the right heart's attitude to come before Him, and glorify His name because we are worshiping Him in truth. The point Jesus was making to the Samaritan woman there was, it doesn't matter where you worship Him. She was saying, our fathers worship God in these mountains. And some say we should be worshiping Him in Jerusalem. And He says, oh, it doesn't matter. You need to worship God in spirit and in truth. That's what really matters. And because God is a spirit. So worship Him without hypocrisy. And then... The last one, I said there was four. 1 John 3.18 tells us that we are to love one another in deed, so our actions, and in truth, without hypocrisy. You know, that's probably one of the most difficult ones to do, isn't it? Serving Him in truth, I think, would be a close second. Sometimes we serve because we understand that it's our obligation, not because we love the Lord necessarily, or in that moment are feeling like we really want to serve God. Maybe we're out in a desert somewhere wondering, why isn't God hearing my cries? And I've got sick loved ones that God's not healing, and I have other issues in my life that I've been praying about that I just don't seem to get an answer for, and yet I will go to the church, and I will wash the windows, or I'll cut the grass, or I'll go to clean up day, or I'll go to visitation, and we serve the Lord, and our hearts really aren't lined up. And I would say, dare say that happens quite often, and it happens with the preacher as well. But I think more than anything, loving one another in truth is difficult. We smile and we, well, we're not shaking hands right now, but you understand the illustration. And yet, we really truly don't love one another like we ought to. Love is, uh, the Bible says to love not just in truth, but in deed. And our actions must follow our, our hearts. And so he says, line up without hypocrisy, love one another. You know, you can tell when somebody truly loves somebody. They may not agree about everything and they may not always get along on every point, but they always want what's best for the others. I'm reminded when I think about that, one of the greatest examples that we have in the Bible, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, would be Joseph towards his brethren. Joseph was sold into slavery and, as you know, was separated from his brothers for many years. And when finally the drought hit and they must go to Egypt to find food, who was second in charge of all of Egypt? But Joseph, they did not recognize him. He spoke using an interpreter to hide his identity from them. He had grown a beard. He was dressed in royalty, or royal robes, and they did not know who he was. But finally, when he put all the servants out and he said to his brethren, I am Joseph, speaking in their own tongue, and 
revealing to them and they under, heard the tenor of his voice and they knew that it was him, they immediately feared, thinking this man has the power to kill us. And the Bible says instead, he fell upon his, their necks and he wept. He invited them into Egypt and he took care of all their needs until the day they died. It's amazing what love will do. The Bible says that charity covereth the multitude of sins. We need to be less angry with one another and upset when something happens, but rather love each other in truth. Let me just close with that verse again, 1 Samuel 12, 24. Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth. For consider how great things He has done for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word. Bless it to our hearts. Give us a great day of serving You. Well, thank You in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.